morning everybody well it's morning here good day everybody um right well in the last video i made some four highlight i'm very happy because it does look like four highlight uh, but it's not what I wanted. What I wanted was um, the silver pattern to work in it. Um, and I've, I inserted at the beginning um, a picture of some beads that was giving me the inspiration to try and make it. So, you, oh, we've got a Doris. Hey, come on. Can you get down? Oh, come on. One line you mat. Good girl. Sorry guys. I let her in because she said she was gonna be a good girl. Hmm. Anyway, um yeah, so I was really happy it does look like for highlight. Um but I I should have explained in the video yesterday. I personally don't like putting paint in polymer clay. Uh, I know a lot of you do, um, I, but I had such a bad um, time with it. I tried making a full turquoise um, and I followed, uh, it may have been a Jessima tutorials, um, I followed it and um, I was using Fimo um, and I, it just went into a sticky mess. We all know Fimo doesn't, um, raw Fimo doesn't react well to water um, or all sorts of liquids. Um, it's, you know, it's in the makeup of it. And I've said this before, Fimo is slightly different than a lot of the other clays out there. Um, and it does react quite badly sometimes um, to liquids. Um, so, I'd tried that twice and I just gave up. I was really disheartened. And then I found out why it was reacting and I just decided I don't want to pop paint in. Um, when I finally got it to work, it just broke. I was sanding it and it broke. Um, so I just don't do it. Um, you know, you may get better results than I got, but I just kind of set a standard in my mind then that I wasn't going to use paint within my clay. You know, painting it on when it's baked, you know, fair enough. Which is why you, you don't see me do it. Um, you know, when I did the stenciling video, I actually used liquid clay. I didn't use um, stencil paint or acrylic paint. Anyway, that aside, I sussed it out yesterday how to put some gold veining in so I just did it with some scrap that was on my desk so this is um, a little bit of white and a little bit of translucent um, so it's not the same density as excuse me as all white and it needs to be I mean this looks like a beautiful stone and I may attempt to do this and call it something else but for the fa for how light it needs to be a very dense colour like opaque not translucent so now I've babbled on for 10 minutes um, we're just going to need some again some white clay I'm using Primo again use whatever you've got guys um, you know and you could use you could use turquoise couldn't you or um, any colour you could just make a full um, stone uh, but for the purposes of this I'm just going to keep calling it highlight so we need some white clay we need some gold clay now I've just got some cernit metallic here um, in gold again whatever gold clay you happen to have we only need a little scrap of it uh, so you might just have a, a you know a scrap ball of mixed metals somewhere um, as long as it's lightish color I think it'll work uh, so I'm going to use white clay a little bit of metallic 
and I'm going to use some liquid clay. Um, I have this clear Sculpey liquid and I've just purchased some um, of the clear, I'll just hold it up and you can see, clay softener and thinner by Sculpey. Um, so um, I'm going to use a couple of drops of this as well just to help thin it out but again um, use whatever um, liquid clays or softeners you've got we want to make a very runny paste um, so that's all we're going to need and of course um, a couple of moulds or a couple of cutters um, I've had some fabulous suggestions by other people in the comments of the last video um, about trying um, some flakes or maybe trying UT which is the um, ultra thick embossing enamel um, but I just tried this first and it worked a treat so um, experiment guys um, you know if, if it's just a little bit of scrap and it doesn't matter what colour it is just experiment a little I mean I find it like it's really good fun um, a little bit disheartening sometimes if things don't turn out properly uh, but at the end of the day it's just a tiny bit of clay isn't it um, right I'll go on um, I need to condition my clay if yours is very fresh just chop a lump off and chop it up it'll be fine this is just um, I hadn't realized I hadn't sealed it and it's just um, it just needs conditioning a little bit I'll go and condition um, some clay we'll do the white bit first and then um, we'll make the paste so I'll see you in a minute okay guys I'm back um, I've just I've not conditioned it I've just uh, no I have conditioned it I've not overly conditioned it I've just got it a little bit soft so like I said there was just a bit of a dry end on it and I'm just stacking it up just to make a little block to chip into um, you may not have to do that so I think I may have conditioned slightly more than I need but again it doesn't really matter does it we just need a bit of white there that'll do and as we did um, in the last video, if you've watched it, um, I'm just going to take a piece and I'm just going to chop it into reasonable sized pieces. Um, if you notice with how light, it's not as fractured, the vein in, um, and the, the pieces of stone are actually... Um, quite rounded um, between the veins so uh, we don't need it as fractured looking as we would say maybe if we were doing a four quarts uh, we don't need it as angular that's why pushing it into the mold and things uh, I wasn't being overly careful because I didn't really need to be uh, let's just give that a tumble to break them up um, I am going to do this other bit again it's probably a bit more than I need um, but if I finish them nice uh, I'm actually thinking of opening my Etsy shop back up because I have got a decent selection of samples now um, so I could sell my samples um, and then add some uh, finer finished pieces as well um, so I'll let you know if I do guys um, I closed it just before lockdown um, because I just wasn't feeling it if you know what I mean uh, it's not closed it's just on a break there give them a little tumble to break them up any bigger pieces I'll just break with my fingers right we'll just pop this uh, to one in fact I'll just pop it onto a scrap of paper then it's easier to move around we'll just pop that to one side 
uh, while we work on our gold. Now, it gets a bit messy, uh, but probably not as messy as if you were using acrylic paint, but it's good fun. So I'm just going to take um, a little piece of this cernet. Um, that's more than enough. I'll just chop that in half. We're going to mix some with liquid clay to thin it into a, uh, a paste. And with this piece, we're going to chop it up into tiny little, tiny little pieces. And it does stick together a little bit. Um, so I'm just separating these pieces um, so I can just work on one piece at a time and it doesn't go all clumpy. So yeah, we're just going to chop this up into the tiniest pieces of grains that you can manage. Uh, sorry about the blade clicking guys. Uh, I thought I hadn't plugged my microphone in then but I've just glanced up and I have. Right, so we're just going to chop this up and I'm just trying to keep it separated the best I can. I feel like I'm baking or cooking or doing herbs or something. I'm just going to bring my white over and this is why I've I've done it in separate pieces because this sun is quite sticky and I'm just going to pick some of these crumbs up and flick them onto the gold uh, onto the white yeah you can I'm just double check and you can see what I'm doing guys um, so we've got little crumbs um, flicked throughout our um, clay. Let's just pick those little bits up. I'll just give that a little tumble to distribute them um, and then we'll add a little bit more. And this will give us the um, a more chunkier vein. I think that's what I was trying to create with the um, embossing powders because the veining on Howlite isn't a fine vein, it's quite um, quite a thick vein and there's um, like little um, pieces of colour grouped together um, so the vein isn't, um, it's more of a marbled vein isn't it, than a fractured vein. Um, you know, I did study a bit of geology when I was at uni um, but I'm not totally um, on board with a lot of the um, terminology but I do my best right, let's just get this split up a little bit yeah you see the clay gets warm it starts to clump back together um, so just Little crumbs is all we want. And then again, I'm just going to pick some of these crumbs up and just sprinkle them over the clay. And I think I think I'll just do one more guys. I had cut four Adna, but I'll just do one more. I think that'll be enough. I don't want to oversaturate it with crumbs. Now, as I said previously, I don't like adding paint myself. 
um, I thought it just it just weakened the clay for me guys I wasn't um, impressed with how things turned out but at this stage you could possibly now just add a little bit of gold paint as well and miss out the uh, the liquidy part um, entirely up to you I know a lot of you do make some fabulous stuff with um, mixing paint and things in just my preference not to do that hence all my experiments right, I'll just give this a little tumble again just to get those crumbs distributed uh, make sure that there's no huge bits stuck together but again it doesn't really matter if there are a few clumps because it adds to that thicker part to the vein in right and now we're going to work on the liquid part um, so I'm just going to take this I may as well add this a bit of a bit that was there it'd be interesting to revisit the highlight using black clay and black liquid clay or maybe you know grey it down a little bit with some white um, because it would make the veins uh, become more chunky uh, wouldn't it rather than that very thin fracture line uh, yeah so I'm just softening this up a little bit in my hands and whatever liquid clay you've got obviously um, it needs to be um, either gold coloured um, or um, a clear or transparent one I am just going to add a couple of drops of this clay softener um, initially just to get it flowing uh, you just again you just use what you've got um, just want to get it kind of squishy um, so it makes it a little bit easier for me when I'm mixing yeah, that's really soft now really really soft got all the mica on my fingers right I'm now gonna add some clear now I have given this a big shake up earlier guys oh I never undo these tops properly and I'm just gonna get some liquid clay on there and I shall just get one of my little tools these are um, actually dental tools I noticed a lot of people using them um, and they're obviously very sturdy I've got a couple of plasticky type tools and sometimes they, they snap because I put so much pressure on them so I treated myself to a set of these dental type tools from uh, I just got mine off Amazon uh, there were, I think they were 12 pounds and there was five different tools in but they're great uh, for doing stuff like this and getting things in moulds and stuff now this is a bit of a process those of you that do uh, your little miniatures and icing you're probably used to doing this on your little iced cakes and things um, I'm just going to keep getting this squishy and uh, I was going to skip while I was doing this because it does take a, a minute to get it sorted but I'm as soon as you see the process so you can see that it isn't you know it does take a minute to do it but it isn't um, it isn't overly hard to do oh, I think I've got my ball stuck in the nozzle again oh come on yeah I have little balls in the bottom of my bottles to help when I'm mixing 
and I'm just going to put another couple of drops of this in just to make it a bit quicker there we go it's getting there now and we just want to get it to a consistency of like um, acrylic paint I suppose uh, you know just get a nice something that we know we can mix well with um, our clay and it's getting there now almost there let me just um, try and scrape it together I'll use my blade I think where's my old blade I'm just gonna oh that squeak I'm just gonna scrape my pile back together a bit um, just to make sure I've got all that liquid clay with it oh I'm making a right mess now aren't I you know there we go <laughs> I'm just oh there's no hope is there no hope for me uh, uh, so somebody left a message yesterday and it just had me absolutely chuckling and she said I love how you make boo-boos laugh and move on and um, I answered her by saying that's my life story just make boo-boos laugh and move on uh, it just made me chuckle such a, a sweet thing to say but it was so true of me she completely hit the nail on the head there we go we've got a nice liquid now um, just making sure that I have incorporated the liquid in and I will just use this blade again to get me excess off top of my knife or whatever this thing's called it'll have a proper name um, yeah. I'm just going to clean my blade and then I'm going to use my blade to scoop this up um, and like I said guys you could totally skip this part and you could then um, just use some gold paint if you're happy to do that it's just I'm not <laughs> and it is a bit messy but you know it's all part of the fun isn't it let's just get the excess of that off that blade I've got most of it off and now if you just start tumbling again as you would if you were using paint or similar and of course like I said we're not too worried uh, about angular pieces with this uh, for how light uh, so it doesn't matter if you're handling it a bit more than you think you should um, because it would make it look more natural um, I'm just tumbling guys and tumbling and tumbling trying to make sure all the pieces are coated and that I've picked all those little specks of gold clay up within and I think that is reasonably coated now um, there we go right now what I am going to do is ooh, get off I am just going to spread this out a little bit and I'm just going to let it sit for five or so minutes because I found yesterday when I was doing it that if I just let it sit a little bit 
um, the liquid clay um, sort of air dried a little bit and it was less sticky um, so I'm just going to leave that just for five minutes just let it breathe if you like I'll go and clean up um, and I shall be back oh let's clean a finger then I can pause the camera um, yeah I'll just go and clean up a little bit and then we'll come back and get this uh, together and make a few um, cabochons and pendants see you in a minute okay guys this is sat um, for five or ten minutes um, so I'm just going to get all the pieces together and start to combine them stuck to my paper a little bit let's get that in the bin and again you don't have to be overly careful with this like you would with maybe um, what's it called if you were doing like a fractured quartz because the highlight is quite rounded um, you know the white pieces within are quite rounded rather than angular um, so you can play with it a little bit more than you probably would with the quartz one I'm just forming a block trying to squeeze some air out of this there we go that's great except for my hands of course Yuck, yuck, yuck. And as usual, I'm just going to wipe up the excess liquid from the outside. I'm just using, oh, my labels come off, a little bit of alcohol uh, on a grubby wet wipe. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit because it'll just save on sanding in the long run, won't it? Um, that's my view anyway I try and keep uh, mess down to a minimum then I'm not uh, having to sand this surface off later and it doesn't have to be brilliant just try and get you know the excess off as much as you can if you choose to do so of course you may not and that's fine said this again a million times but just do you your, your own way um, you know might give you the building blocks if you like to do something and you do just do what you want with the information there we go that's not too bad now I'll just let that alcohol ink evaporate off and I'll just put a bit on my hands to clean them up a little to sparkle in the clay gets everywhere uh, it's very well um, very well pigmented the cernic metallic lots of mica in it right let's give this oh I'm sliding because my top's wet um, let's give this uh, a little slice and see what we've got and there we've got our veins and you know it's these little lumps and thicker bits of vein that I've been trying to um, recreate. Uh, I've just got a bit of a 
bubble in there but it'll sort itself out in the mould but there you go that's it in a nutshell let's get some in moulds uh, I've dug my triangle mould out just because I absolutely love this shape love it um, I'll just get this into a triangle just to help I'll get that in there give it a squish to get it in the corners uh, it's a little softer than it was yesterday this um, I've let it warm up quite well just ensure it's in the corners of my mould then I've got that nice angle edge and get my ruler Get off. Sticking to me already. And I think this is going to look lovely. Um most definitely not a fail although you know I was kind of tongue in cheek saying fail used to get there guys I was um, I was a little bit disappointed but again um, it wasn't wasted was it it did look pretty cool as just plain old how light there That's one pendant. Let's pop that to one side. I think I'll just make two pendants, guys. Um, I got a new uh, cutter, one of these donut style, off center donut styles. So I think I'll do something with um, this as well. Um, so I've got a fairly decent chunk. Excuse me, I've got windy pops. My daughter-in-law recommended um, some chai latte, instant chai latte, and it's delicious, absolutely delicious. But um, I think it's the cardamom that's in it. It repeats on me. Oh, getting old now. Things repeating on me. And some of the um, liquid clay is just oozing up a little bit on this. I'll give it a wipe when I've done is that going to be big enough yeah just going to actually bring that in a bit then there's not much waste left on the edges give it a little roll I will bring some lolly sticks in in a sec guys I just want to get this liquid clay off the surface then I won't be sanding too much later right a couple of lolly sticks just for my thickness And then I'll give it a little burnish. There we go. Let's get a bit of scrap. I've still not cut myself any smaller pieces out. And 
I've got some cling film that I'm just going to use to help it to dorm. Just make sure that there's no big wrinkles in it before I start. That'll do. Let's see, I'll try and catch that blob there because it's quite pretty. I'll just get me block to help me guys because it's quite hard with the with the film there we go just hoping that isn't too thin but it should be okay if I support it well when I wrap it, I'm probably going to wire wrap it. Get off. And I'll just quickly get these crumbs off. Because I know from previous experience that these ones in the middle are a little bit of a pain to uh, get off. There. I'll just pop this on a scrap of paper back into shape there so we've got um, a little doorknot and a little triangle and um, waste not want not again with these scraps I'll just fold them together and I'll pop them into I don't know how long thin mould is there it is I'll just make a sausage with this it'll uh, look quite marbled that this one I think how much is there there yeah and I'll just wrap it with this piece and pop that in again waste not want not get it in <laughs> you just stuff it in It'll be fine. Yeah. I've actually had, while I've been doing the testing for this, I've actually had a, another idea for something. So that'll probably be the next video. Um, using similar techniques to this, but getting a different outcome by doing something different. So you'll have to all wait and see for that one. So that was just using the little scraps up. Oh, that cut off nicely. And I know from previous experience that this end always needs a bit of a sand I can never get it quite flat enough so there we've got uh, oh, let me get rid of that mess there we've got a little doorknob and this one and this one which I'll bake in the moulds and let's just use these little scraps and make a little bead jumping around sticking to my finger I think there we go oh it's very sticky that one right guys I shall go and pop these in the oven have a little clean up and I shall be back shortly see you in a min hi guys we're back out of the oven Here's my pieces. Now they do need sanding, of course. That 
outside's a bit messy uh, but once it's sanded it'll be fine um, not as much veining uh, in these that's that just bit of scrap one that I squished up uh, not as much veining as we got on this one uh, I think I used bigger pieces didn't I but again um, the nature of uh, natural stone is they're all different aren't they oh and my little bead so I'm not going to worry about those for the minute because they were just scraps I'll go and sand these um, and then when we come back um, I'll maybe just string this one up for you or something um, just so you can see something that's finished but yes I'm really pleased with how they've turned out um, I'm not sure you'll pick it up on the camera but the gold veining looks perfect um, if anything I'd have just chopped my lumps a little bit smaller um, or maybe not um, not have rolled it so much so that e elongated because if you look there on my block um, you know I should have maybe put two pieces together but that aside it worked hurrah um, yeah I'll go and give these a bit of a sand and a buff and then um, I'll just maybe string this one up for you uh, just so you can um, see a finished piece so I shall be back shortly hi guys I'm back just been hunting for some findings because I don't really use a lot of gold findings uh, but I just thought this would look particularly nice with it now look at that trying to make sure you can see the vein. I'll bring it up a bit closer make sure it zooms it looks really lovely I'm very pleased with it uh, this was the back side that was quite messy it actually looks better than the side that I had planned to use um, but I think you kind of probably understand now what I meant by um, rather than just having veins through um, I wanted these little thicker pieces to make it look more realistic so if we bring up my original one which we are now just calling normal highlight and that's the gold veined one I'm really really pleased with how that's turned out um, so yeah there's that triangle uh, this is a little bit bumpy on the surface but I haven't sanded it out too much um, because you know natural stone sometimes has little divots and things in it so I've just left that piece there that's got a little divot in makes it look more natural it's not going to go anywhere and it's just got a lovely a gentle sheen to it not too highly polished to be fair um, Primo does buff up very nicely but you don't get as deep a gloss on Primo as I've noticed that I do get on Cernit but it lends itself very well then to stones that you don't want super shiny so I'll just pop that little one to one side I've got two gold beads uh, <laughs> I've just literally had my bead box upside down hunting thinking I must have a gold bead somewhere and I'm just going to use some of this um, coated card gold coated card um, I think it'll just set it off nicely and I'll probably just do myself uh, maybe 20 21 inches just to make sure that you know it's a, a reasonable length for our fork if they were it where's my scissors just warm it up a bit to get that kink out there we go and I'll do my little usual trick of double loop in I 
Ooh, I need to pick a loop. Oh, and then I just twist and pass it back through and it makes that lock rather than it coming loose. Get that nice and tight on there. Then I'll just add this gold bead. It's actually a, it's a metal, uh, metal hollow bead. And I must invest in some more of these in silver because they're great uh, for this bit because that then fits over the knot. So there we go. Just a, a quick pendant to show you something that you could do with them when it's finished. And my little triangle. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Um, the, I, I know sometimes you can't pick it up on the camera, but that little fleck of gold running through it just is just what I wanted. Um, so right guys, I shall leave it there. Thanks ever so much for watching me in my daft experiments. Um, in the next video, we're going to use some um, semi-translucent in one color. Um, and you can use any translucent you want. I've actually just tested a piece mixed with, um, I've just got a little bit of, I don't use Primo translucents a lot because it has that tint to it. Uh, but when it's mixed with white um, you don't notice the tint um, so we're going to use um, some of this and some white and make uh, like I did with this test piece um, so we're going to make a more uh, translucent stone in the next video um, so I shall leave you all to it thanks again for watching and um, I shall see you all soon. Bye.